So we were going to talk about uh, the concept of preservation, just what does it mean, and uh, then then try to apply that to the digital world, or what is digital preservation. But but we thought we'd start with what does preservation mean in the in the wider world. Do you have any thoughts, John? Yeah. Well, it seems like something's really obvious, right? Like uh, the last scene in Raiders of the Lost Ark, where the government workers are just pushing this big crate into a giant warehouse and yeah, it's preserved, it's all set. And uh, I don't think in the real world, when in the line of work we do, that it's quite so simple. Well, as, as an archivist anyway, I tend to, to, um, I tend to think that there, you need to preserve more than just the artifact. Um, for example, um, let's, let's take a look at uh, famous Babylonian tablets, or just clay tablets from the Middle East in, to the medium of writing in, in the ancient in ancient times. Um, yes, uh, you can take a, an, you know, a, you can preserve the artifact, ironically, by baking it, um, it, when, it when it hasn't been, uh, when it hasn't been baked by the original uh, makers. Um, but without several layers of context, it doesn't really all you have is a tablet to look at. Um, if you don't, for example, know the language and the script, you can't read it. If you don't know a little bit more about the contextual context in which it was created, it's pretty hard to understand it. Um, and you might even need a little bit wider context uh, about well, well, what in the digital world I call the discourse community. What does you know? What does it mean to use this particular medium uh, in well in ancient times? Because even after the uh, development of papyrus uh, in, and its wide use, at least in the Mediterranean, uh, North Africa, uh, clay tablets were the medium of exchange for diplomatic correspondence, uh, and that so it had a meaning. Uh, the artifact itself had a meaning that we wouldn't know if that other material hadn't survived. And it's the medium itself in that case that has the meaning, right? Yeah, it's not exactly. just what it says, it's actually it, the fact that it, it was a clay tablet tells you right. you know, used for and diplomatic purposes. It, it, it tells you if you'd sent it in papyrus, it would have been quite significant and maybe even insulting. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas the fact that it was sent on you know, clay tablets uh, was consistent with diplomatic correspondence. On the other hand, you know, they, they were used also for, you know, routine business transactions, tax records, and, and the like, um, at least in the, you know, in the Near East, um, in the middle, you know, away from the Mediterranean. So that's talking about a context, a, a place where it's the artifact, the sort of material that matters, right? Because knowing that it is uh, clay rather than papyrus is important. But also the sort of historical context that it was made in, and the, and the significance of that medium in that context. Right. So, it, so if in fact all you had was, uh, you know, the inscription from that tablet taken down by an archaeologist, you might lose that. Right. You might right. lose that context. So the original becomes important, um, but uh, so also does the the uh, context of creation and use. So, for example, in a lot of, uh, you know, uh, clay tablet archives, and they, they've survived very well uh, in, in dry climates, uh, we can determine um, that they were organized into record series, uh, just as uh, paper records were thousands of years later, mm -hmm. that they were indexed. And uh, we have a much better idea what those individual documents were as a result of the fact that they were placed next to other documents of a simpler, similar type, and may even have been uh, done sequ sequentially by date or by number, uh, which, you know, also is a safeguard for authenticity. So I have a question about that, which is that, you know, here is this object that had a, a meaning, a diplomatic meaning, let's say, in its original uh, context in ancient Egypt or wherever. And now it's come through um, various stages to get to the British Museum or wherever it is today. Yes. And it has been, as you say, you know, next to other objects on a shelf and it's been poured over by, you know, Egyptologists perhaps or even, you know, transcribed and written in books and so forth. Um, let's suppose that there was sort of like this, you know, apocalypse and all you had left was the tablet. How much of that context needs to be preserved? Of course, you want to know the original, but what about the context of all the people who've looked at it since 
or 3000 BC. Is that important? Um, I would argue it depends what you're trying to preserve, of course. I mean, this is an this is an area of some debate, uh, and will uh, you know will never be resolved uh, authoritatively. But if you're looking at the impact of that that tablet on you know Western ideas or or global ideas about ancient times, you'd have to know who who looked at it when and mm -hmm. how they used it. Sure. So, for example, you know the the Rosetta Stone had a value back then, but it had its its historical significance has come because of its ability to translate hieroglyphics, exactly. right? which right. is something that wasn't necessarily a function or a value of it at the time it was created. Exactly. That's it. that's you know something that was uh, assigned to it later, um, and and that happens all the time. Of course, the mm -hmm. documents take on it a significance later that they didn't have originally. Right. Bill Brand calls that the public use of the, the artifact, um, and, and, and that's a form of context that we're not used to associating necessarily with preservation because we tend to think of the context of creation rather than the context of use. But um, as you mentioned, this is a kind of trans-historical uh, uh, context that we might want to look at. Uh, the other example I was thinking of along similar lines, um, but much more, more up-to-date uh, would be, say, the Gettysburg Address, where you might say that, well, you know, all I need is the text itself, right? Because then, then it's it's not even really about the material. Um, you, you know a little bit about the context, but if we have those words, then mm -hmm. we've preserved it. If we've saved it as you know a text document or uh, re-inscribed it in, in a typewriter or in some kind of digital uh, text. Right, but if you had a videotape of it, you probably wouldn't throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> well, then then it becomes the question of like, what are there are, are there still values if we if we say okay there's there's you know sort of the material it's made from and then there's the meaning which in this case is the English text and then there's a context is there still value for a just a kind of regular text uh, and and I think in this case uh, there there is I mean it's value for the material because if you think about um, you know the kind of uh, legend that uh, uh, Lincoln took five minutes and wrote this on the back of an envelope, right? And if you right. see the actual physical copies, there's five of them, and they show right. that he worked really hard on it, and you know, crafted this very careful uh, address. It wasn't a spur of the moment impromptu speech, right? And do we know whether he actually read it out exactly as it was on paper, or did he modify it as he spoke? Right. Uh, that's, that's a good point. There's probably uh, you know stenographic accounts of it as well, I would guess. Uh, so I would say the original, uh, you know, as you've effectively argued, always, always has some value. Uh, sometimes, uh, even if it weren't for showing the evolution of that speech, uh, archivists have this concept called intrinsic value, where the original has value sort of as an artifact, like you might want to put that on exhibit, or, you know, it's such an important thing that people want to see the original regardless of, of what it can tell us. Um, you know, you could argue that everything, every original has some intrinsic value. In my world, in the world of art, I think that sometimes that gets too much value. The aura mm -hmm. of the original uh, material gets mm -hmm. in the way of another possible um, value that it might have. So, so that's again, you know, again, to kind of broaden our perspective there, we've got material, which again, you know, does have value um, in many cases. Jeff Rothenberg cites example of not the Gettysburg Address, but similar transcriptions where he says, right. you know, it used to be that people who had paper documents would, you know, would 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 throw them away once they had actually transcribed the, the text. That's true. But then, you know, science comes around later and says, well, there's this thing that Mary Curie discovered called radioactivity and you can carbon date, you know, material objects. And right. that's something you didn't know was valuable about the original material, right, until until later. So it's so it's dangerous to, to assume that you, you've extracted all the meaning that's or or the value from a particular artifact, and then you could toss the material. 